Hello, in this video we will look at Blender's particle system. So let's get straight to it. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and delete everything in this scene. So A and A again, X, delete. Next, I'm going to go ahead and create a plane. So Shift A, Mesh, Plane. And I probably will scale it up a bit by pressing S and then dragging out. And then grab Z to move it up to about there. So now I can go ahead and add particles to this plane. To do that, I have to go to the Properties window and scroll over to the Particles tab. So click that, then press New. You'll immediately see a number of new settings for the particles. So without changing any of these settings, if I play back my animation now, you can see we have our first particles. So these settings here that we see on the right contribute to our particles behaving the way it does in our scene right now. So let's just now take a brief look at some of the settings of the particle system. First, in this box here, we have emission settings. The emission settings control how many particles are emitted, so you can change the number of particles here. You can change the start and end time of the particles. So for example, if I, if I, if I want the particles to end on frame 20, I just put frame 20 and all the particles will be dropped until it reaches frame 20. The lifetime, this generally controls um, how long your particle lives. So currently it's at 50. So if I change it to something a bit lower, like say 30, you'll see as your particle goes down, it starts to disappear into nothingness. That's because by frame 30, the particle's life has pretty much ended and it becomes, well, invisible. So say I wanted it to survive till say frame 50, I just press 50 and then it should go a little bit further and then die off, just like so. Um, let's move on to the next one, velocity. So these settings generally control the speed or the force of your particles and the direction. We have the normal, so this controls how fast the particles emit from your object. So you can make it explode out or you can make it calmly come out. So at the moment it's pretty calm. If I make it explode out by say putting like 100, should explode like crazy or it's going the opposite direction. If I want to go, if I wanted to go down, I just go like that. The reason why it's in the opposite direction is because the normal is facing up. So um, let's make it a little bit less strong. Or oh, let's just say five. So if I put something like five, it'll go up and then it'll fall back down. So it's being you know, thrusted out of the plane and then drops. All right. Um, and uh, this one controls the direction, I guess. So if I move that, it'll move it in the X direction. If I move it uh, that, it'll move it in the Y direction. And we, we, we can create like those uh, water sprinkler fountain features that you see in those public parks, I guess. Next, we have physics. These control how the particles move and their size. So currently we have little dots and when you render these, these dots won't really be visible. But if you assign these dots to like actual objects or something, you can control the size of these particles just by uh, pushing this up and down. You can't really see it here, so you first need to assign each of these points an actual object. And you can also apply this other physics related stuff like Brownian motion. So, so this adds a bit of random uh, erratic movement of your particles. It won't all move in a uniform kind of way. It will all be sort of randomized a bit. It may tend to help realism since nothing in the real world is always uniform. Uh, we have drag. So this is related to friction of the air, air drag, that kind of thing. Uh, we also have field weights. So this is pretty much the, the extent to which you allow physics to take effect. So remember in an earlier video, I showed you the scene settings and how we set the gravity of our world to be minus 9.81. Well, the particle system takes into effect that. So when the particle uh, jumps out and then falls, it's actually obeying the gravity of Earth. It's actually falling at 9.81 meters per second squared, the acceleration due to gravity. Uh, we can control that as well. We can bypass that for specific objects. So we can say that now nah, for this object, I don't want the gravity to take effect. So I can turn off the gravity and now sort of pretend like it's in outer space or something where there's no gravity and things like that. So you have a lot of different control of your particles to create different, different cool looking scenes and effects. The final one I want to show you is the cache. 
The cache is used to store your particle animation data so that it doesn't have to keep recalculating each time you press the play button. So as you can see, as we press the play button, you'll see a red line being generated as it plays. Well, that's because it's actually calculating the particle movement as it animates. And you don't see it now because, well, we haven't changed any setting here. And it is kind of using like a cached or temporarily stored version of your particle animation data to display on your screen. But say you, you create this epic firework scene or, uh, you know, um, some, some epic hair animation movement. And you don't want to calculate again when you open up Blender the next time. So that's what the cache is here for. You would generally press bake. So if, say until frame 100, I want to bake the current animation. So all I have to do is just press bake. And generally after waiting a while, the baking should be complete. But when you bake it, all other settings are disabled because this now just purely becomes animation data. So you generally press bake once you're happy with all the animation and you're just ready to keep it as just plain animation data so that it loads up quickly next time you open up Blender. And you can render it straight away. If you don't want to cache it anymore and you want to continue working with the settings, just press free all bakes and, you're, and you will basically won't store that in cache the next time you open up Blender. So it's always useful to bake your final animation data. I remember when I was working on my movies, I had some pretty complex hair animation thingy going on in my scene. And I remember I forgot to press bake. And the next day I came to my Blender scene, my hair looked crazy, it looked all over the place and it wasn't moving correctly. I had to actually press bake again. Now, since I showed the example here, it only took like one second to bake the whole thing. When you're actually working on something a bit more complex like hair and things like that, when you have tons and tons of uh, particles, it tends to take a long time to actually bake, sometimes up to one hour. So uh, it saves a lot of time when you actually bake it first and then save your Blender file because uh, it can make your life a whole lot easier. So one final thing before I end this video, I just want to show you how you can convert these data points into objects because at the moment, if I render this, so let's just add a quick camera in there. Uh, just RZ. So if I render this really quickly, oh, let's just add a light source as well. So Shift A, I'm just going to add a sun lamp. And just, it doesn't matter where I put it, it won't really affect. But uh, if I now hit the rendered, I see nothing. Uh, our particles look invisible. And that's because, well, these points here are basically just data points. They're invisible. So as the 3D artist, we have to actually define what those points will look like. So in this instance, if I want to add, say, uh, a monkey head to be our particle, I mean, I don't see the reason why we need to use that, but I'm just going to use a monkey head. Her name is Suzanne. So to actually convert these data points into the monkey head, all I have to do is go to the render settings here and press object and then select the object, which will be our Suzanne. Now, all of a sudden, our particles have turned into Suzanne. So if I go into the physics settings now and turn the size down, we can see the physics settings taking into effect now. And I can add random to make all the particles a different size from one another and not keep them all that same uniform size. Good for realism once again. Um, all right, so now when I play back my animation, we have a lot of Suzanne heads flying in that direction and then just disappearing off into nothingness. So I hope this video has been useful to you. In the next video, we will learn to actually use the particle system to create things like hair and rain. So I hope to see you in the next video and keep blending.